outside in Minnesota. 22 degrees out. Perfect day to drive the Hellcat, right? It's an everyday driver for me. Now today, got the car in valet mode, dropped it down to 300 horsepower. Rolls real cold, wet. Was uh, snowing this morning, had a lot of black ice out this morning. You know, I still did my thing in it though. Just gotta drive like you got some sense, that's the key. But um, the things I'm talking about today, why I chose to buy the Dodge Challenger Hellcat. In all honesty, I'm gonna break it down into five reasons on why I chose to buy a Dodge Challenger Hellcat. One being, the exterior look. I love the look, long, old school look. You know what I mean? It's just, I've always liked that look and it's been a, a look that's more fitting to me. You know what I'm saying? I'm a long, tall individual. You know what I mean? I need a lot of space. And uh, that's number one on why I bought the car. Second thing is interior space. It's like I mentioned before, I'm 6'10", I'm a big dude, so I need lots of room, you know what I mean? And me at 6'10", I have plenty of leg room with my seat all the way back, all right? And I got plenty of headroom. Now, mind you, if I chose to go without the sunroof, I have a lot more headroom, right? But I'm not fighting for headroom like this right now. I'm driving around comfortably every day, just like this with the sunroof. And I like the sunroof. I like to be able to look up. I like the, you know, that glow on you. I like all that, you know what I mean? So I had to have a sunroof, and it was a must-have for me, right? But even with the sunroof, I got lots of headroom. With my seat all the way back, like I said before, I got lots of leg room, right? It's not an issue at all. And even if, let's say if I wanted, let's say I had two people on this side. I had one in the passenger seat and one sitting behind, uh, one other passenger sitting behind the person in the, in the passenger seat. And I wanted one more person to fit in my car. Let's say they were like, I don't know, 5'3", five, 5'4", five, or whatever. I could scoop my seat up enough to the point where I'm comfortable and my knees are on the dash and I can still have that person sit behind me. No problem. And I really like that, you know what I mean? So on to number three, the power. The power in this car is crazy. Like, it's just, it's endless. No matter what gear I'm in, I can hit that pedal and it's over. And I like that, you know what I mean? I like that it has 707 horsepower. I like that whatever car pulls up to me, if I'm on the highway or I'm on the regular street, I don't feel like there's not one car that can see me. Yeah, there's a bunch of customized cars. I'm talking about straight out the factory, other than no supercar, there's no car that can touch me. You see what I'm saying? And I mean, you got the new ZL1 and all those kind of cars and, uh, the 350, uh, I think it's 350R Mustang. You got those kind of cars, but I'm talking about pure outright horsepower on the piece of paper coming from the factory. There's no car that can touch me, and I like that. I like it a lot. Number four, the everyday drivability of this car. Now, I got this car, like I said, in valet mode. I got this car in valet mode, which breaks it all the way down to 300 horsepower, right? And I could also put it up to 500 horsepower if I, that's the eco mode. And then I can also put in 707 horsepower, right? So let's say if it's the summertime and I just feel like acting a damn fool, I could put the car at 707 horsepower and do my thing all day. Let's say when I want to be an eco and I want to be friendly to the environment, right? I could put it down to 500 horsepower and also not, it, it wouldn't have the 707 horsepower feel, but with that 500 horsepower is giving you more than enough, right? But let's say it's wet out, it's snowing out like it was this morning, and it got a little black ice out. I can drop it in the ballet mode, drop it out 300 horsepower. Now I'm driving around on the ice and the snow, on these wet roads and everything, and I'm doing, I'm doing it very easily, you know what I mean? So my tires ain't spinning and a bunch of other stuff. So I like that about that car. It's just the everyday drivability and with modes, I can switch it, I can turn the engine all the way up, put that whole 707 horsepower in it, burn rubber all day, or I can bring it all the way down to 300 horsepower on, and drive on black ice, and through uh, snowy back roads and all that stuff with no problem, car's not sliding, I'm not spinning my tires or any of that, so I like that. Another thing is, which goes back to the everyday drivability, is the fact that I can drive it with just me in the car and it feels like a sports car to me, right? Even though it's a muscle car. Or I can sit there, throw my girl in it, our little guy, and a few other people if I wanted to, you know what I mean? And, and, and drive it like it's a family whip. Right? But at the same time, I could be in it by myself and feel like I'm in a sports car. But another thing that goes back to the everyday drivability of this car is the fact that I can literally drive in the snow, I can drive it in the summer, I can drive it in every season. You know what I mean? And when you get to this level of power, you know what I mean? I feel like there's no car really that can do what this does in every season, right? And we're talking about with just the, the regular factory um, all season tires that come on this car. We're not even talking about if I grab a pair of snow tires, which I'm gonna do. 
um, and drove around it, then it'd be even more easy to drive in the winter, right? But it's even with the all-season tires, who, 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 which everybody talks bad about, saying that these tires aren't that good and this, that, and the third, they work out just fine for me. Now, if you ain't, if you out here trying to act a fool, then yeah, these tires are terrible for you. If you're on summer tires and you in the winter trying to act like you in the summer, it's not gonna happen. Obviously, any tire would be bad. But for me, these all-season tires work just fine in the snow. You know what I mean? Like, of course, winter tires would be better. You know what I mean? And of course, summer tires will be terrible in the winter. You know what I'm saying? So what I'm going to do is I'm going to get a pair of snow tires and then I'm going to have a pair of summer tires and I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to swap them. When it gets to the fall, I'll put my snow tires on. Or the winter, I'll put my snow tires on. When it comes back to the spring, summer, I'll put my summer tires back on. You know what I mean? It's that simple. And I'm going to drive this car all year round. Another thing to touch on too is me being 6'10", there's not, like I love coupes and there's not that many coupes that can give me the interior space, the, the exterior look, you know what I mean, the headroom, the legroom, you know what I mean, the, the universality of uh, being able to have passengers and all those things. There aren't too many coupes that can fit me the way this car fits me and my needs, you know what I mean, um, all while giving me the amount of horsepower and endless amount of torque, like, and that supercharger one, there's not too many cars at the price range, there's actually none at the price range that's gonna give me 707 horsepower, the everyday practicality of this car, the feel, and the look, you know what I mean, that this car gives me. So, that's one of the main reasons on why I chose to buy the Hellcat. The fifth reason why I chose to buy this car was, it's such a jack of all trades. Like I mentioned before, I can go to the drag strip in the middle of summer, use my 707 horsepower, go home after, want to save gas, put in eco mode, 500 horsepower, or if I, let's say I take my my girl out to dinner later on that night and we go out to a restaurant, I can drop it in valet mode, put 300 horsepower to the engine. That way the valet can't burn on my tires whenever they choose to. I mean, and then at the same time, I get the endless amount of torque and power that I want, you know what I mean, at my disposal. But at the same time, I can drop it down and it can be a family hauler. I got lots of backseat room, lots of trunk space if I want to go put a whole trunk full of groceries in it. You know what I mean? Um, I can literally do whatever I want in this car. You know what I'm saying? And I'm not compromising anything at all. That's why I believe it's such a, a jack of all trades. This person just pulled it out. That's why I believe it's such a jack of all trades. And it's not just good at one or two things. It's very universal in everything. And I mean, when is that ever a bad thing? You know what I'm saying? When you can touch on literally every category you want to in this car, you know what I'm saying? But you don't necessarily have to, right? But and at the same time, you don't gotta suffer the penalty if you choose to buy a car that's really great at one or two things, but not so much at the other things. Then you're, you're, you're compromising nothing when you buy this. But in that case in which I just mentioned, uh, you're compromising a lot when you get a car that's only good at one or two things. A car that's just going good at going at circuit races or you know what I'm saying, just a drag strip or, you know, whatever the case may be. I like a car that's very universal where I can do a multitude of uh, different things that I might choose to do. In conclusion, everybody's reasoning for buying a car isn't going to be the same as mine. Some people don't want a universal car. Some people want some ded dedicated track car, you know what I mean? I, don't, I, I personally don't, you know what I mean, because I'm never hitting the track. But like I said, everybody's reasoning is different. And my reasoning for buying this car, to sum it all up, is that I just like the everyday drivability, how big the interior space is, the power, and the fact that's really a jack of all trades, you know what I mean? And also the exterior just looks nasty, you know what I mean? But like I said, everybody's reasoning is gonna be different. Some people are gonna agree with this video, some people ain't, but I don't give a fuck, so who cares? <laughs> but if this is your first time um, checking out my videos and you like what I'm saying and you like my videos, hit that like button, subscribe, and check me out.